Okay, I'm going to continue attempting to teach on the subject of discernment between true shepherds and false shepherds. And at this stage of our study, I'm going to continue focusing on having a proper mentality, having the right mindset that will enhance our ability to distinguish between the two. This, this, these principles will work not only for false religious leaders, but false people in general. But we're going to focus on Colossians 2, in which Paul is giving the church there keys to recognize and deal with false shepherds. Today, though, I'm going to start. I, I'm, I sense this is where I'm supposed to start. I don't know, though, actually. But there's a <clears throat> there's a verse in Colossians. Oh, let me stop here again. This we're talking about mindset, the way we think, and primarily the way we think about ourselves. The false teacher is going to want you to see yourself a certain way. They're just like narcissists because most of them, that's what they are. They're godless. It's, I, I understand why Paul... <laughs> Uh, you read his epistles when he warn, warns about these false teachers. There's one reference in the Bible. don't remember where it is. But he, he tells them that he was crying. He was weeping as he was writing that letter to them. Just thinking about how horrifying the prospect of an infiltration of false teachers and shepherds would be. It had him in tears. Why? Well, the prospect of an ungodly man, an ungodly man, if you look up the word ungodliness, please look it up. Don't take my word for it. It's in Strong's. An ungodly man is a man who hates God. So I understand why Paul was crying and weeping his eyes out talking about this at the prospect of a man who hates God leading God's own sheep. <laughs> it is horrifying and un it is horrifying and unfortunately I, I'm afraid, I'm of the opinion, pray I'm wrong, but I'm of the opinion that the majority of the visible church has already been captured by ungodly men. I want you to look at this. Oh, I read this this morning in Colossians 2.3. Remember who you're identified with as we read this. You're identified with the Messiah himself, with the man, with the living, breathing person who you could walk up to, and you will someday. You will in the future. You can walk up to him and, and hug him in the flesh. He has a human body. God in a human body. Can you imagine that? What's even harder for me to imagine, though, is that God Almighty joined me with the Messiah. Man, no one saw that coming. When Yeshua was on, that's why they had a hard time with it. 
they were expecting a king who would rule from the outside and, and keep the nation free from the Romans. Small thinking. But that's, I am sure that's the way I would have thought too. The son of David, the king of David, has come to redeem us from a corrupt government. No, he came to redeem us and save us from hell itself, from Satan and, and his power. He broke the power of Satan over our spirits and joined us with the Messiah. Well, I'm, I'm married to him. That is harder for me to grasp. It's easier for me to understand that which is impossible with my own understanding, I must admit, but it's still easier for me to see and, and kind of grasp God becoming man. What's harder for me is knowing that God has joined me and identified me with Him. It's already done. I'm already one with Him. and You are. We are all one with Him. That's a fact. But perceiving that as fact, whew, whole nother ball game. And that's why we're learning these things. A, uh, any attempt by false shepherds, I don't care how good they are in the arts of deception, any attempt on their part to deceive or entice or take captive a man or woman who is even beginning to learn about his union and identification with the anointed one, it's going to fail. You're not going to be able to pull the wool over a man or woman's eyes who knows who they are. It'll be impossible. Okay, I'm going to read Colossians 2, verse 3 from the Expanded Bible Translation. In the Messiah, in the man we're married to, in the man we've been joined to, we are identified with him. In him, all the treasures all. These absolute words, I don't know about you guys, but they're, <laughs> I got to meditate on them. All means all. It's hard for me to grasp absolutes, you know. There's got to be an exception. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are safely kept hidden in the Messiah. He is our wisdom. He, through His precious Holy Spirit, lives inside of me and all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge if they're in Him, they're in the Spirit of God, and if the Spirit of God dwells in me, does the Spirit of God dwell in you? Yes. <laughs> yes, if you are joined with the Messiah, He does dwell in you. If He dwells in you, then the one in whom all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge reside by the same token dwells in you. In your spirit. Not here. <laughs> Not in your head. Our souls, our, our, our mind in particular, it, it's, it's a computer. It's essentially, it really is. It's essentially just a computer 
that helps us to navigate in this physical, natural dimension. When it comes to spiritual things, your head is out to lunch 99% of the time. Unless, it's got the, unless you're thinking in line with the book, it's out to lunch. Guarantee it. You're not going to find wisdom in here. This is a key. I'm just going to go ahead and read this to you, then I'll show you where I'm going. Keep that in mind, the, the, the treasures, wealth, riches of wisdom and knowledge wisdom of God, knowledge of God, are safely kept hidden in the Anointed One. And the Anointed One, via His anointing, is in you. So why do you... I'm going to quote John. Why do you need any man to teach you? Why do we look to any man for wisdom or knowledge? Mr. False Teacher, you're not going to impress me with your great knowledge and degrees and, and how smooth you talk or how rough you talk mm -hmm. or anything external. I'm not impressed by your intellect, Mr. False Teacher. I'm not impressed by your knowledge of the Bible. So you can read and memorize. So what? I'm not impressed by that. What does impress me, though, is the wellspring of wisdom and knowledge that God has imparted into me. That impresses me. And it impresses me also just like it did Jesus when he was impressed with people's faith. It impresses me when I see that wisdom and knowledge flow out of another person's spirit. Now that impresses me. I'll never see that with a false teacher. It's dead inside his spirit. All you're getting is intellect. That's all you're getting is soul, not spirit. Head. I gotta be careful saying that. I didn't think of that. You're getting head, head knowledge. knowledge. <laughs> head knowledge, forgive me. Head knowledge. Okay, I'm gonna turn to Genesis chapter 3. I think this is it. Yeah. Chapter 3, verse 6. Check this out. We're all familiar with this story. This is the fall of man. This, this is a record of the incident in which Adam and Eve ate the fruit and died. But check this out. When the woman saw that the tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the woman saw or perceived that the tree was good and pleasant for food, and that the tree, that it was delightful to look at, and that it was a tree, it was a tree, check out the pronouns, it was a tree to be desired in order to make one wise. Wait a minute. I just read that in, in Jesus, all the treasures of wisdom are hidden. Well, <clears throat> Dude, I, I feel anger coming on me now. <laughs> Woo! Who, who do you think was walking in the garden in the cool of the day every morning with them? Santa Claus? A ghost? 
Every morning He was there. Right? Am I quoting Bible or not? He, in the cool of the day, every morning He'd be there to fellowship with Adam and Eve. Who do you think that was? Woody Woodpecker? No, that was Yeshua Himself, the pre-carnate Jesus. Walk. That was Jesus. <laughs> Every morning, there's Jesus. Waiting for Him. And yeah, I do believe He was waiting for them. <laughs> I think that what I'm saying is I think they would make Him wait sometimes. They, I, I don't like their attitude. You study Genesis and Adam and Eve's attitude, you start to see, man, these guys don't have the right attitude. Ungrateful. Mm-hmm. Un-effing grateful. That's a key to establishing your identity with God because it's hard to grasp it. It is. But if you start expressing gratitude over and over again, even if you don't feel like it, screw feelings anyway. They don't matter. Do it as an act of your will. You start being grateful, even if you don't feel gratitude, even if your life sucks. Just try it. Try it. Expressing gratitude for joining you and marrying you in marriage. Joining you in marriage to the Messiah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You'll begin to get a revelation of who you are in Christ. And no one will be able to stop you then. No one will be able to deceive you then. Oh, they might for a while. (laughs) The good ones might for a while. But eventually, you have Yeshua, the man himself, in the garden. The garden that he created for you. You have the man in whom is invested all, A-L-L. We're talking eternity, man. We're talking the eternal dimensions. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in this And you're looking to a tree? <laughs> you know, you read that, and, and I read it for years thinking that They just wanted to know good from evil. That's all. What's wrong with wanting to know the difference between good and evil? Because sometimes I I, I just detest the way these are translated, these scriptures were translated into English. They wanted to be their own God. They wanted to be the ones who would dictate what's good and bad. Which is the pathway to being a false self, essentially. Because good and evil resides in the realm of God only. Only God is the judge of what's good and evil. Now, somehow or other, I'm not even going to broach this topic about our future. That tree's there for a reason. I don't know what Hashem's plans were for that tree, but He did tell those two idiots, you eat it, you die. To me, they're wanting to know the difference between good and evil. That's what Satan's telling them. You'll know know good from evil. You will know good from evil, not him. 
Don't listen to him. Do what thou will. The false, listen, the false teacher is no different than the serpent of yesteryear. He's going to present you enticing arguments that in the end of the day crumble like dust in the light of a holy God. They knew the difference between good and evil. It was real simple. Good, let's put it in classifications. Good, bad. It was a real short list. Okay, here's good. Be fruitful. Multiply, that's good. Uh, watch over the garden, guard it. That, that's good, that's a good thing. Work until the garden, good thing. Good. Let's go to the evil section. It's really short. This list of commands is real short. Do evil. This is under evil. Do not eat the fruit of that tree. Good evil. And Eve's looking at that tree like, oh, man, I... Boy, the devil says, I'll, have, I'll, I'll gain in wisdom. I will be elevated in my wisdom if I eat this tree. Eat of this tree. Whereas the author of all wisdom and the source of all wisdom is sitting right there. You know, I'm no different. We, I don't think any of us are any different. That tree always look, looks good. I've eaten of it many a time, unfortunately. Anytime I, I, anytime I move outside of the will of God, anytime any of us, which is called sin, we're, we're, we're nibbling from that tree. We're, we're being our own God. We're, we are deciding what's good and bad rather than allowing God to do it. But I, I wanted to show that to you. I, I hope, I pray this blesses you that you have inside of you the one in whom is hidden all wisdom and knowledge. You don't need any man to fill you with his wisdom. You are not inadequate. You are complete in him. I'm here to tell you, you are complete in the Messiah and you have no need that any man teach you. Amen. Yeah, Yeshua is your shepherd. Get that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeshua is our shepherd. Yeah, we don't need any others. Yes, he's alive, we right? Need, we don't need the middleman. We don't need the middleman. I think I'll name us this that. We don't need a middleman. Amen. Thank you. We don't need a middleman. Our middle man is in heaven right now, and he's doing just fine. He's still Lord. Amen. Thank you, guys.